right, this worksheet deals with the constructions of a reflection. Now, understand that uh, a construction can be defined differently. You could do it based off of patty paper. You could do it by folding a piece of paper. There's different ways to do reflections. Uh, here we're kind of looking at just compass and straight edge operations. So, interesting enough, this is a nice review of something we've already done. Uh, where we learned previously how to create a perpendicular line through a point. Now you say, well, why is that construction helpful? Well, remember, a flex reflection uh, moves a point to the other side, and this line becomes a perpendicular bisector. So we want to create a line through B that's perpendicular to this line. And so this construction has already uh, been done by us a few times. So the idea is to simply uh, place your marker, uh, your pointer on B, and then swing your compass to intersect the line twice. This uh, creates two locations that are equidistant from B, and then we place our pointer on those two locations and create uh, a a location that is on the opposite side B prime. Now B prime is the location of the reflection and the reason why is we did two things. We created a perpendicular line that was the construction we just did and by keeping our compass the same length we guarantee that this location is the same distance from these two points as to this one, a perfect reflection. You just have to do that uh, two more times. Uh, you do not have to keep the compass the same each time. A is a little bit further away, so I'm going to stretch my compass and make two marks, and then from those two locations, again, create the X location. This is uh, A prime right here. And so again, I don't need to do this, but I think on the first one I'd like to do it again to show you that what we're creating are perpendicular bisectors. That's what that line is becoming each time we do this. Now C is close enough that we can just shorten up our compass a little bit, mark once, twice, and then from those two intersections create our X. So it didn't quite get the enough arc there and there is C prime. So we pull out our ruler now and our, our straight edge maybe better called and we fill in the segments that make up this triangle and when we're all said and done we have a beautiful reflection of uh, triangle ABC. Notice again, A, B, C, clockwise naming, A prime, C prime, B prime, clockwise naming, a reversal of orientation. Now, um, this says construct the reflection using a piece of patty paper. Hey, they this time suggest we use patty paper. I like that. So what I'm going to do here is to simplify things. I'm going to mark B, A, C, and I'm going to mark the two locations on the line. And the reason I'm going to do that is because they won't move in a reflection. Remember, points on the line do not move. And so I'm going to match those up. And now I see my locations. Now, this is sometimes a little tricky to be able to get the location on the other side. Sometimes if you use pencil and you do this, it gives off. Oh, it did work. If you push hard enough, sometimes it goes through a little bit, just enough to leave a mark and to know where those locations are. But that didn't quite work. What I also do sometimes is use my pointer and poke through the patty paper and uh, in doing so make a hole, and that hole is where I need to go. There it is. Let's take a look. We did pretty good. B. Let's see, A prime, C prime, and that looks real nice. The last question says, determine the line of reflection. Oh, cool. 
So in other words, the line is missing, but the reflection has taken place. Now we know the line is going to go right down the middle here somewhere. And we are going to use something that we know. We know that our line of reflection has to be the perpendicular bisector of AA prime, BB prime, and CC prime. It will be the same line for all of them. So I'm just going to connect C and C prime, just because they were easy to do that. And I want to create a perpendicular line right through the middle. We know how to do that. It's a nice review of a midpoint construction. So I'm going to pull out my compass, extend it beyond halfway, make a marks above and below, arcs above and below, and arc above and below. And this, of course, is our midpoint construction, which not only forms a midpoint, forms a perpendicular. This line here is the perpendicular bisector of C, C prime. But if we did B, B prime, A, A prime, it would be that one as well. Nice constructions on how to do reflections.